Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a, um, a 2008, it's a uh, Toyota Camry. The problem we have is that in the back when you're driving this vehicle and you go over bumps you can hear a lot of banging in the back of the car. Um, I, will, I will tell you this, um, the guy who owns the car is not very happy. Um, he had somebody replace the struts in the back of the car for him. They were actually, uh, it looks like the whole strut assembly was changed inside here. Um, and he brings it into me and he says, you know, did the guy make a mistake that he still has a rattling noise in the back of the vehicle? Um, it's not the struts. Um, it's actually, it's a very simple thing. It actually happens on this car all the time. In the back you have the sway bar. On the end of the sway bar you have stabilizer links. The links on the end have a tiny, tiny little bit of play in them, but the big problem with this car here is the sway bar bushings themselves. Where the sway bar fits through the bushing, there's a lot of play up and down inside there. I'm going to bring you in there, I'm going to show you what I mean. It, it seems like it's a very insignificant amount of, of, um, of play, but I've seen them on this car before. Even the slightest bit of play in here whatsoever is going to cause the, uh, the rattling noise when you go over bumps. Uh, on the lift here you have a little play, but once you factor in the weight of the vehicle going over the suspension, that, that noise gets pretty substantial. So let me show you what it is, and then I'm going to show you how to, uh, to resolve the problem. I'm going to make a phone call to the customer first and, uh, and see exactly what they want to do, whether they want to do just the sway bar bushings, or they want to change the links while we're in there. So uh, let me bring you in now and show you what it looks like, and uh, then we'll make that phone call. Okay. This is the, let me just get you up here so you can see, all right, that, I don't know if you can see that, all right, maybe you can, let's get some light up there so you can see. This is the sway bar bushing right up inside here. And you can see it bolts up through here. It looks like 12 or 13 millimeter bolts. The play that you have in there is just that little bit. Let's see. You see that movement inside there? It doesn't seem like a lot of play, but that's absolutely causing his rattling noise in the back. So, uh, all right, let's make a phone call and uh, let's see what he wants to do. All right, let's give him a call. Hey, may I speak to Mike, please? This is Jim from the Auto Repair Shop. Mike, hey, this is Jim from the Repair Shop. Hey, Mike, um, I took the, uh, the car for a ride, and I, I do hear the rattling noise that you're talking about. It sounds more like on the left rear than the right rear. No, no, I, I know it's on both sides, but the left side is a little bit more noisy than the right side. You can hear the left side over everything else. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the guy did a good job on the struts. I mean, they, they look like they're good quality struts. Uh, um, it, I don't see anything wrong with them. But what happens in the back there is a piece called the, uh, the sway bar, and it has what's on the end of it is called stabilizer links. The links have a tiny, tiny little bit of play in it, probably ins insignificant that you really don't even have to worry about it. But the biggest issue is the bushings themselves, the sway bar bushings they were actually worn out. On the left side, there's a little more room in there. When you push the bar up and down, you got about maybe a, a 32nd of an inch, to maybe a 16th of an inch play in there. And with the weight of the vehicle on it, it bangs around and it's pretty loud. So I think if we take care of the, uh, the bar bushings, that should resolve your problem. I mean, I mean, it's up to you. If you want, I can change the links too. I mean, they, well, the bar bushings are actually one place, and the links are someplace different. They're they're on the other side of it, and they bolt through through the end of it, where I have to put these bushings in the middle of the bar. You know what? Okay. All right. What I'll do is I'll take a picture of it, and I'll show you later on when you come down. I mean, I can I can do it. It's not a problem. You don't really have to. Okay. All right. All right. Let me work out a number on it, and I'll call you back in just a minute and let you know how much everything will be. But I think for everything, 
you're probably looking around, I'm going to say about 150, 175, something like that. But I only use the good quality links. I don't want to use the cheapest stuff. I want to use the uh, the better stuff. It's the, it's the Moog is a premium uh, part versus the, uh, the cheaper. Okay, all right, let me, let me get an exact price, and I'll call you right back. All right, thank you. Bye. Okay, um, he wants to do, do the links at the same time. Um, like you heard me tell him, you don't really need to. Uh, if it was my car, I would change him. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait. Um, but let me work out a number on it. I'll give him a call, and we'll see what he wants to do. So um, stay tuned. We'll find out what we're going to do. All right, be right back. Okay, we did talk to the customer, give him the price on it, and he elected to do the sway bar links as well as the bar bushings. So first thing we're going to do now is we're going to take these wheels off. You know what, let me bring in, I'm going to show you why. Get some light. Okay, as you know, to change these up here, we're just going to take out these bolts. Uh, you can see already I sprayed them with penetrating oil so we don't have a problem. Um, so we are going to take out these bolts here. Be careful, you do not want to snap these off. In here we're going to put an Allen key and then we're going to take off that nut right there. And the reason we have to take the wheels off is because as you can see, up underneath here, you see how it, let's get you in there so you can see. You see up inside here how it faces in towards the wheel? We're just going to take the wheel off for a little bit easier access up underneath here. So, uh, all right, let's take the wheels off and uh, let's continue. Okay. This happens all the time where they get rusted on there, so we'll show you how to get that off. Just make sure you put a lug nut back on here, and then we're going to get in here with a rubber hammer, and we're going to hit it, and they usually come right off. If the rubber hammer doesn't work, then we get a real hammer or we beat the daylights out of it, but most of the time if you hit it pretty hard, it usually pops right off. Okay, so this is what we're going to do up here. Oh yeah, you can see they were sensor track shocks. And they were probably loaded, so it's a complete assembly. So we're going to find the Allen key that we need to get in here, and then we'll, uh, we'll continue with that. So, uh, all right, let me get some tools and uh, we'll continue. Okay, just going to give you an example of what tools you're going to need. Now, obviously, these are the ones from the right side. I already disconnected those and, re and, and hung those up already. But these are the tools you're going to need. You're going to need an air gun. If you don't have an air gun, you're just going to need a socket. It does make it a little easier when you have an air gun to do it. But if not, you can do it with a socket. We're going to need an 18 millimeter wrench, a 14, a 3 8. Um, I think this is 15. That's 14 millimeter. We're going to need an extension with a 12 millimeter socket. A couple of uh, ratchets, very long extensions. You're going to need an Allen key to get in to hold the, uh, actually, you know what, let me show you. To hold the end of the stabilizer link right there. But I'll explain that to you in just a minute. A light so we can see what we're doing. A hammer just in case. And uh, these are the replacement parts. Now, the replacement part, as you see, is a little different than the standard factory part. Now, you see in here, you have to get in here with the Allen key. They strip out all the time. Once they strip out, you have no choice but to cut that off with a hacksaw or a, um, a sawzall or something like that. What I like about the replacements here, these are actually made by Moog, this particular one. You can get in here with a wrench and you can hold it in the back like that while you tighten this up right here. So later on down the road, if you need to change it for any reason again, you can just hold this in the back here and you don't have to worry about that little hole right there stripping out and causing you a problem. Um, this is the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, bushing itself that holds the bar in place. And as you can see, there's a big difference in the size right there. You can feel the difference when you put your finger in there. 
you could feel the difference. You see how far it goes in there? And look at here. It goes all the way up past my knuckles. So this one here is worn out. And that was the side that was not bad. The driver's side is the one that was the worst. So let me show you what I did up underneath here. For now, I, just, I did take out that, uh, that bushing there. I installed a new bushing in here, and I just have it hung in there loosely. I didn't tighten anything up yet. And this, as you can see, is loose in here as well. We're not going to tighten this up until we get the other side done, too. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here with an air gun, and we're going to shoot that nut loose. It's, it's not going to come off, but it will break it loose so that I can hold this in here with the Allen key and then take this off right here. Keep in mind that with the Allen key, you're holding that, that shaft stationary, but you're not turning the Allen key to get it off. You're actually turning the nut to get it off. Here, and then up on the top here, and then we're going to take out those two bolts there. That one, and the one in the back there. All right, so, uh, all right, let's, uh, let's get in here and uh, let's get started. Okay. So like I said, we're going to try shooting this bolt off here first. So that breaks that, lo that bolt loose. You see how it's loose, but it just keeps on spinning the shaft. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to disconnect that. I remember what I said. You're actually not, you're not turning the Allen key in here. You're actually using the wrench to turn it to get it off. So we're going to put the wrench on. We're going to put our Allen key in. And remember, it's going to be a little bit rusty in there as well. And now just hold the wrench, I mean hold the ratchet, and use the wrench to get it off. And now we didn't strip that out. We can just take this off and we'll continue on the bottom now. I'm just going to shoot that off now. It's a little, it's probably just going to spin like the other one, but we'll see. Okay, just spinning. So again, we just put our wrench on it like this, put our Allen key in there like that. And then we turn the wrench and just hold the Allen key in place so we don't strip it out. Now if it strips out, don't worry about it. It's a little more work, but you just have to get in here with a sawzall and cut that nut off this way here. All right, so we'll take this out now. And now we're gonna take out the, uh, the bolts up on the bottom here. Now, you can use an air gun to take these two out. I don't like using air back here because this, sometimes they'll just snap right off. So I do take it out by hand, but you can use an air gun if you wanted to to get it out. Okay, now you'll notice that this bracket right here has a little hook on the back of it like that. So we're just gonna pull this out, just like this. And that play that you had was right inside there. All right, so let's take this out. that. We'll take our replacement, put our replacement over the bar, and you can see it's significantly tighter on there. All right, we're going to take this and we're going to hook this end back up on the top here first. So you know, I do never seize these bolts just to make them come out easier in the future. 
And now we're just going to catch these by hand for now. We're not going to tighten anything up yet. So that's, that's good for now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put our sway bar link back in place where it came out. On the bottom. We're going to catch it with the bolt for now. Catch the one up on top, of course, the same thing. And now we're going to tighten everything up. Okay, like I said, you could use an air gun if you wanted to. You tighten the other side. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to tighten up that bolt right there. Okay, what I like about these is that you get up here with the wrench, just like that, and you hold it, and we can tighten this up. All right, now we'll do the same thing up top. We're going to hold it with the wrench in the back like this. See, okay there. Yep. Okay, we'll hold it with the wrench like this. That's nice and tight. I just want to point out one more thing to you. Now obviously I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Now you see the grease fittings? That one is facing down, so we can get in there real easy with the grease gun. But this one is facing up. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to get to. So we're going to turn that grease fitting now. And that's where this 3 8 wrench comes in handy. We'll point it down so we can get grease into it. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here to this side and we're going to tighten those up right there. And uh, that's it, we'll be done. So uh, let me tighten it up. Okay, so that's pretty much it. We have both sides sway bars on, we have all four of the bolts that hold the bar back in place. And you know what? I should have showed you this. Take a look at that bar up there. I don't know if you can see it. Right up there. We'll grab the bar. And you can see that there's no movement at, at all in that bar. Okay, so that's it. This job is done. We are going to grease the, uh, the grease fittings up here because we want to make sure there's an adequate amount of grease in there. And now if this guy was to grease this car, he'd never have to worry about changing uh, stabilizer links again. Um, so remember, before you go ahead and start changing parts, whether it's the, uh, the shocks, the strut, um, even the, 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 um, the stabilizer links, don't throw parts at a problem. Check it first to make sure. In this case here, unfortunately, he wound up putting struts in this thing, and they were loaded struts. Most likely, this car had to have a wheel line at the, at the same time. So I'm sure he paid a lot of money to have this job done, only to find out that the noise was a little better, but still there. All right, so uh, that's it. This takes care of his problem. I'm going to throw the wheels on, take it for a road test, and then it's off and on to the next one. But I do have to make a phone call and talk to him because while I'm in here and I have this wheel off, I see his left rear wheel is right down to the, uh, to the um, uh, like almost grinding right into the rotor. So he does need to do brakes. We are going to make a phone call, and uh, we'll see if he wants to do the brakes today or he wants to do it at a later date. Remember what I say, there is no such thing as a foolish question. A foolish question is one that you don't ask. So if you're not sure about something, you know, reach out to me or to, to, to uh, you know, somebody who is, who is informed 
so you're not steered in the wrong direction. All right, uh, as always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.